Hello and welcome back to Bossing English with Mr F. Today, language paper two, how to maximise time on your initial reading. Uh, this is a tricky paper and it's uh, why? Because you've got these two sources, one source A, which is modern 20th or 21st century. I think this year they've told you it's going to be from the 21st century. Uh, source B is uh, old uh, 19th century and I think that's the same this year i.e. setting up the differences of attitude perspective for your question four. Um, but there's a lot of reading, isn't there, to do. So you probably want to spend about 10 minutes uh, reading. And if you're reading, you want to be doing active uh, reading, which means highlighting and annotating. There are two schools of thought. The first school of thought is I'll highlight any language devices I spot, like metaphor, similes, personification on both sources, because they'll be useful for question four when I have to kind of analyze methods being used to convey attitudes or structural features. Now, these might be first person versus third person, or um, if there's a circular structure, or maybe they, they do something clever at the start, like a bit of misdirection that's happened one year, or the tone or mood, whether someone is enthusiastic or angry uh, could be also considered a method or even things like use of humour uh, and jokes and puns. Um, so I could do that. I'm going to propose something different, which is to read and look for information uh, for question two and question four, which require use of both sources. The way I would propose doing this is you use a colour for question two and a different colour for question four. Before I read any of the sources, I'm going to highlight the question so I know that I'm looking for the right information. Source A and source B doesn't help to remind myself that. Both sources doesn't help to remind myself that. The types of board, that's the information I'm looking for to answer this question. Uh, go away. There we are. Info. I'm not. Details. Well, that's just another way of saying quotes, isn't it? Doesn't hurt to remember. I've got to use quotes for this. Both sources again. Summary. I need you know a couple of differences or similarities. Whatever I'm being asked to do. What you understand about the different boards used by the surfer. So this question is differences. Now be careful. Sometimes it can be similarities. So you absolutely want to make sure that you're getting the right thing there. So types of board, different boards. Okay. I will do a video on. Question two, which is quite tricky because to get all the eight marks, you're going to have to do something called inference. And I'll explain how to structure that and do that uh, in a later video. All right. Question four, which I can hopefully do at the same time uh, if I'm really clever. Uh, let's have a look. Let me scroll up a bit. Uh, whole of source A, whole of source B. Compare. Yep. How writers convey different perspectives on surfing. All right, now the absolute fundamental thing here is writers convey. I want to, it's, this question is about the writer's attitude and the methods uh, they use to convey that attitude. Um, so it's what they say, how they say it, and how they get their point of view across. Here it's perspectives, but it could be attitude or point of view, whatever it might be. But the absolutely fundamental thing is writers convey. What methods are they using to convey their attitude, their opinion on something? All right, uh, I'll come back and do another video on this question and how this is actually all very useful uh, to help you as a kind of checklist. Uh, but that's for a later date. This one is just about that initial reading. So let's see how this works in practice. Question two, different types of surfboard. Question four, um, methods used so let's have a look. The first time I ever saw somebody riding a surfboard was at the Manhattan Pier in 1953. Yeah, so, but there was only a few out on surfing the morning glass. So he's using that kind of... Uh, okay, I've got some... Oops, that's rubbish, isn't it? Uh, so this guy likes, you know, uh, already I can spot some stuff. So this is kind of like a flashback. Uh, the morning glass... Uh, you know, so there's a structural feature that I could use for question floor. This guy's flashback, maybe nostalgic, uh, you know, uh, and he's using a, a kind of a metaphor to kind of paint the scene uh, in this kind of uh, hazy halcyon days type thing. Haven't got anything about surfboards yet. Saw these bronze gods all incredibly good shape, happier and healthier uh, than anybody I'd ever seen. So that's kind of hyperbole you've got there. 
Uh, so we can see that, and you've got this brilliant metaphor. And I say brilliant only in that it's useful uh, for you, bronze gods. So there we are. I've got stuff for question four. All right, let me see if I found anything for question two. Um, Da, 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 da. The boards were 11 feet long, 24 inches wide, weigh 50 or 60 pounds. Um, okay, most servers at the time have hollow paddle boards, plywood shell, solid redwood slabs, 12 feet long, much lighter and better boards. So this one's kind of talking about the evolution of boards and how they're kind of being you know, refined and fine-tuned uh, into becoming better. Um, one thing I've noticed about this, you know, because I've read it before, is that at the end, he gets in the water, uh, you know, uh, I drag the board into the water, uh, that big clumsy thing, um, uh, gliding over the water, uh, uh, you know, spread eagle groaning. So he, you know, it's kind of uh, first person, you know, plus you know, uh, engaged in the sport. You know, this is kind of immersion, isn't it? That's the word I'm looking for, immersion. All right, there we are. Now, for both of these, I'm looking for differences. So I'm going to go to this one. And again, I've got my yellow and blue. Question two, question four. Let's see what we come across. A grand display. I mean, look at the tone here. Uh, a grand display of the national sport of surf bathing. So it sounds kind of kind of antiquated, uh, and kind of, you know, like, um, like a tourist, you know, kind of outsider perspective. Whereas the other person is, is really trying to get involved and, be, and rather than being a spectator, wants to be involved. Uh, most exciting pastime, you know, it sounds kind of quite formal and stiff, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, I've got some stuff about the surfboard. Uh, it's a tough plank of wood shaped like a coffin lid. Two feet broad, six feet nine, well oiled and cared for. Uh, so this is really important. So this is more like ritualized, uh, uh, you know, ritualized, uh, you know, more 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 ritual than hobby, you know, or sports. Ritualized, um, traditional, cultural pastime, as it were, rather than something that's being fine tuned into a sport. Okay, so you get the idea. So there, I might just do that, just to remind myself that these are you know, the things I'm looking for here are differences in some way. I'll just show you some of the other differences. I mean, here we get this kind of a very, um, you know, uh, this person's in awe. I mean, they're both in awe, really, but for different reasons. One's in awe because they want to participate. The other one's in awe because they're a spectator. So you could just call that spectator's awe. Uh, and, you know, she finds all this kind of, uh, I held my breath in terror, my anxiety, thronged with spectators. She's one of them, you know, wonderful exploits. So it's really that kind of outsider looking in, spectator who's kind of uh, impressed but happy to remain on the outside. Uh, by these kind of people who I think she refers to them as athletes. So, you know, um, and you'd, you'd certainly get some stuff there about how, the, you know, the, the dangers there, the verge of engulfment, uh, like corgs in smooth mortar, uh, you know, um, ex one expected him dashed to pieces. So there's that kind of fear and reverence, maybe. You could have a look there. All right. There you are, you've got the idea. I'm pulling out devices and methods that are used to convey attitudes and maybe like kind of flagging up differences here. Um, so what I've done is when I go through the paper now, I've got stuff that A, I'll be able to use for question two and question four. Some of that, because you know I'm gonna have pulled out devices for question four, I'll be able to use for question three, which will either come from source A or source B. I think on this question, actually, it comes from source B. Uh, and it's this one, so if I've spotted devices in there, um, like this simile, I'll be able to just recycle that. So I'm actually gaining quite a bit of time by taking that kind of more methodical approach to the initial reading of both sources. Okay, uh, smash the like, um, subby sub up on the subscribe, and uh, I'll be back with a short video on question two, approaches and how to format your answer in terms of the writing. Uh, same for question four, um, and that's probably it for language paper two.
Bye for now.